Welcome to day five of our 10 for 10. And as I've mentioned on each of these occasions, uh, please God, we'll continue after the first 10 and start it all over again. Opportunity to learn together, opportunity to be together. I hope you're doing well and I hope you're managing. Um, I think it's always important before we begin just to remind anyone who is struggling, who is feeling overwhelmed, reach out, speak to somebody, speak to a professional, talk to a friend, call a rabbi. I'm always happy to take any calls. And if I don't answer, I will always get back to you. So we're on day five. Um, we've looked at some of the customs re re surrounding the chuppah and marriage and weddings. And before Shabbos, we looked at some divrei Torah on the Yakel Bukure. So today I thought it was a very unique Shabbos this past week, a Shabbos where I'm sure for many of you who are used to going to shul every week, uh, it was a bit strange, a bit surreal to not have the opportunity to be together with others, to be in a shul, to daven with a minion. Um, but it was certainly uh, incredibly inspiring to be able to film that um, live Kabbalah Shabbat together with Chaz and Greg here at South Caulfield Shul and um, wonderful to see the feedback and we'll have to keep doing it as long as we're in the situation and we keep davening that we move through the situation, through this crisis as quick and hopefully with not too much damage being caused in all senses of the word. So today I thought, you know, one of the one of the cornerstones of the Jewish experience, you know, and I think one, one of the things that this has taught us really is that, and of course, as a rabbi, I'd be, you know, foolish to say that the shul was not a major part of our Jewish connection, our Jewish life. But honestly speaking, Judaism is equally important at the home, having a Jewish home, having a place where we can do the different traditions, the different laws and the experience for ourselves and our family and our children. It has to has to also uh, be counted as one of the incredible ways that we as a Jewish people have always stayed connected because the home is also a mikdash ma'at, a holy sanctuary, a place where we can teach, we can inspire. And that's why it was wonderful to see so many people in their homes singing along with myself and, and the chazan. So really, really special. And I think one of the things which so many Jewish families do is the Shabbat dinner together, regardless of your religious observance and regardless of how you might conduct it your Friday night Shabbat meal is is irrelevant, but it's being together with family and doing certain things. So I thought today we would start looking at some of the traditions that happen on a Friday night, some of the traditions that we do at our home on Shabbat, some of the things you may not be aware of, some of the things you may feel that you have been doing it and weren't sure why. So we'll start going through them. Now, one of the first things we do when we start to gather around the Shabbat table, and we at my home, we love having Shabbat guests. Not everyone has the ability to do that. We are very fortunate we can. Um, now it's going to be quite challenging because uh, we are told not to socialize, not to bring people other than your immediate family in your home. Uh, we don't want to spread this virus. Um, and of course, one of the things we do start off singing is the Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Malachem, Asharet, Malachem, Yehelion. A song which many are familiar with. Um, and the question is, why do we sing the Shalom Aleichem? Now, there's a number of reasons. One main reason which I'd like to share with you. But one of the things that I've noticed, and I, I, I'm not sure if I saw this anywhere, so it might be my own chidush, my own idea. Probably not, because everything that we say is probably learned from people that came before us. But if you look at the four stanzas that are said, the first one is Shalom Aleichem Malachei Hasharet. The next are Malachei Hashalom. So Malachei Hasharet is the ministering angel, and Malachei Hashalom are the angels of peace. Why start with Malachi Asharet and then Malachi Ashalom? And so one of the things I'd like to suggest is that Shalom, of course, is alluding to one of the main, most important things in the home is Shalom Bayit, is having peace in the home, is having harmony between husband and wife, between parents and children, something which we all need to strive to do, something which is, is continuous effort. And that's why we start with Malachi Hasharet. The word Sharet is service, is working, is ministering. In order to bring peace in the home, it doesn't happen in the mail. It doesn't happen automatically. You are required to make the effort. It's something which I tell couples on a regular basis when I speak to them in the lead up to their wedding. When we do marriage counseling, things don't just happen on their own. If you think a relationship is going to be successful by just sitting back and doing what you want, I have uh, unfortunate news for you. But at the same time, if you put in the effort, if you are going to begin with Sharet, Malachi Sharet, then you'll hopefully have Malachi Shalom. <clears throat> now, there's another interesting uh, idea, and it's taught, uh, we learned in a Brisa that Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda said that two ministering angels, they come and accompany a person home when they come home from Shul and Shabbat. 
So you leave Shul and these ministering angels come to you. The interesting thing is that it says one is a good angel, one is an evil angel. Now that's, I guess, for another topic for a different day. But what happens if the home is a home of Shalom Bayit, if the candles are lit, if the table is ready? So, and it doesn't mean that this is just, you know, on the, on the wife or the husband to do it. It's both and the family working together to ensure that the home is being ready for Shabbos. Those who prepare for Shabbos will eat on Shabbos, meaning you put in the effort, I guess, physically and spiritually. If the home has the atmosphere of Shabbos, then the good angel says, may it be like this, may it be thus the following Shabbos. May this be the way it is, and the evil angel is supposed to respond, Amen. So he has to give a bracha. But if unfortunately the home is not ready, things are still chaos, and people are not enthused, and there's no preparation, then unfortunately the evil angel say, may it be like this next Shabbos, and the good angel has unfortunately against its will, has to respond amen so we have to decide and therefore when we sing shalom aleichem we're hoping we're welcoming the angel the the good angel is going to respond amen uh, is, sorry refor force the evil angel to respond amen because of our preparation now another beautiful custom one which um, mo many homes do i know we certainly do it in our home and that is to sing before kiddush on shabbos we sing the very famous words of mishle of proverbs famous song which is composed by Shlomo Melech called the Eishet Chayil, the woman of valor. Why do we add this? So a number of reasons. Firstly, the great Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, who uh, we know that when it comes to Lag Bomer, many people go to his tomb, his gravesite um, in Meiron, and it's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people come there, a great leader of the Jewish people. He writes and he teaches that Shabbos, in a sense, declared master of the universe. Every day of the week has a spouse except for me. What does that mean? Sunday and Monday are coupled. Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Each of them have a partner. Who do I have, says Shabbos? So Hashem answered, the community of Israel is your spouse. You and the Jewish people are married. And I know the famous saying, which many of you, I think, heard before this past Shabbos, when we unfortunately had to all be alone, is that more than the Jews have kept Shabbos, Shabbos has kept the Jewish people. It is our partner, it is our spouse, and therefore we sing Eishet Chayil, not according to Rabbi Shimon Yochai, not specifically to the wife of the home, but the first reason is because we sing it to the bride and the groom, which is Shabbos and the Jewish people. Secondly, of course, we know that traditionally it was a lot of the times uh, the woman who was able to prepare the food, to get the house ready, to really bring the atmosphere of Shabbos to the home and her efforts need to be recognized and therefore we sing the Eishet Chayil to acknowledge and praise her for what, all that she did to uh, get the house ready for the Shabbos atmosphere. Another reason is the word Eishet Chayil or the prayer Eishet Chayil um, is an allusion to the Torah. So the word Chayil which is valor, woman of valor, if you take the numerical value it equals up to 48. And it says in Perikah Avot that there's 48 ways through which the Torah can be acquired. And since the Torah was given on Shabbos, it's fitting to recite the praise of the Torah. So Eishet Chayil saying, we're praising our ability to study Torah in the 48 ways. And therefore it's an allusion to the different mechanisms and ways that we can learn the Torah. Now, here's a nice minhag. I don't uh, recall uh, seeing it being done, but it's, it's still beautiful. There is a minhag. If you do do this minhag, I'd be curious, maybe post it in the comments or send me a message. But some of the practice on Shabbos, even before Kiddush, that they would kiss their mother's hands. It's brought in the Magen Avraham, and one is based on the Kabbalistic doctrine, which is beyond my understanding, to be honest. And some say that because she put in the effort, just like the Eshet Chayil, it was almost like paying honor and respect to her when Shabbos arrived and saying, thank you for doing all that you do. Another minhag. And again, um, like I mentioned by the Minhagim, the customs regarding marriage, there's so many of them, we're not going to cover all of them. And I'm sure many of you have Minhagim and customs that you did at your home. But there's another Minhag that um, to rinse out the Kiddush cup before you make Kiddush. And some actually leave a bit of water in the Kiddush cup. It's brought in the Mishnah Burra, I believe. And it's based on the Mishnah in Brachot that we don't say Brach on wine unless you put some water into it. Why not? Now, it's probably because based on those days, the wine was extremely, extremely strong. And therefore, to water it down, uh, to ensure that you didn't get sick or, I guess, intoxicated too much. But today, because most of our wine is not as strong, so nevertheless, we still keep that tradition. And I guess it also has some Kabbalistic underlying or underpinning things as well. 
One final one for today, and we'll continue tomorrow, um, covering the chalas. We know that you come home and you see the chalas covered with the chala deck or the chala cover. Um, and what's the reason? So the Shulchan Aruch says we do this. And firstly, the verse which lists this shiva, the shivat minim, the shivat haminim, the seven special fruits of uh, a species of Israel, um, mentions wheat before grapes. And the, we assume that the fact that it's mentioned first gives it a, a higher status, more of importance. And therefore, because our sages said that we have to recite Kiddush first, we didn't want to embarrass the Chalas. So we cover them so they, don't, they stay uh, okay that you know, their honor is not being offended and they're covered. Now, I'd like to just end with saying that this is an amazing story because you know, there's the famous story of somebody who came home, somebody who'd never been to a Shabbos meal, came to visit for Shabbos, and the poor wife of the home forgot to cover the chalas. And the husband started shouting at her, how could you forget it? How could you forget it? And crazy. This is the one thing I've asked you to do. Anyway, after they had washed and eating, the, the guest asked the husband, you know, why, why do you cover this bread? Why did you get so angry? He said, oh, we covered the chalas so we don't embarrass the chalas in front of the wine. And this man said to the husband, maybe you should consider not embarrassing your wife. And I think, you know, all these traditions of being sensitive to inanimate objects, of course, is a lesson to us to be highly sensitive when it comes to embarrassing another human being, let alone our spouse. So yes, covering the chala is important, but remember what it's teaching us, that if we worry about the honor of the chala and not to embarrass it, how much more so we shouldn't embarrass our fellow human being and in particular our significant other. And one final reason why we cover the chala, it's in remembrance of the manna bread which fell for the Jewish people that ate in the desert. And the manna fell every morning, enclosed in all sides by the layer of Jew, as if it was like a packaged container. And so to recall this beautiful uh, and stupendous miracle, we spread a cloth to remind us of the manna bread that fell in heaven from heaven as well. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll continue with some customs surrounding the Shabbos meal. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and blessings to you all.